Now we're standing out here in a field of cereal rye that is uh, plant, relay planted with soybeans already. The rye was planted about October 15th last year. As you can tell we had a pretty hard winter. This actually froze just uh, three days ago again. But uh, the beans were put in here two days ago and we were just digging here. We've actually got sprouts already on soybeans. So the goal here is if we can pull off 35, 40 bushel of rye, hopefully 60, 70 bushel beans. Rye generally goes all to cover crop, but we've got some going into beer, some into bread, some into bourbon. The cover crop thing is the easy market. And uh, then as you start building, that's when we started adding the other venues. And, uh, you know, that that's, it's fun, but it's a challenge. You know, you, go, you know, start learning what it's like to work with customers. It's educational. Off in the distance, there's a failed plot. But we're off to uh, that direction. See the nice square lines? That was supposed to be some of our winter crop test plot that uh, Camelina didn't make it and Rape didn't make it. But we're, we're turning that into a learning experience. The biggest challenge is uh, adapting to whatever Mother Nature throws at you every year. You know, we haven't seen a year alike since we started doing this. I think we went field scale in 2016. So, I mean, adaptive mindset is critical. You know, everybody's, well, how tall the beans are going to be? I don't know. How tall is the rye going to be? Well, we know that'll be up there pretty good, but one of these years it's going to go flat. You know, that's where the row crop head should shine. We can hook underneath of that and suck the rye in yet and still not smother out. You know, but like the other field where we showed you, this is a, these are a 3.9 bean, which is extremely late for northeast Iowa. That other field I plant, intentionally planted earlier being in that one, if it, the rye makes it, we'll probably let that go till harvest. And then we'll harvest the rye and the soybeans together and then separate them back out. Now this one, we'll, we'll come in here and harvest this one probably July 20th to 30th is usually when we're out here doing that. So, like I said, we, we learned a lot last year with the little fiasco last year. We learned we actually don't have to harvest the rye if we're nervous about that. So when I seen how them two fields are shaping up, I'm like, we'll, we'll adjust on the fly on them too. I mean, the stand's got to improve a lot and just needs to even out or we might just terminate them fields. That's kind of why I went the earlier bean gives me options, spreads out harvest. You know, that, that's the other thing I would impress upon people. That's the biggest thing the relay crop and stuff that does for us that I don't often talk about is it spreads out our workload. You know, a lot of decisions I'm making the last two years with health issues is what can me and my wife handle. Well, beans and rye and stuff like that, we can handle. Now this year, yes, I'm planting some corn, but that's probably going to a feedlot. I don't have to harvest it. So eliminates that workload for us in the fall. So that, that's just some of the difference we're thinking about as time passes on for us. We're getting older.